What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we've got Mechagon Junkyard. Now this is one of the easiest dungeons this season, by far. I think teams have already done 31s of these, which is quite insane. And most likely you'll be two chesting or three chesting these up until that point anyway. Um, you just have to be safe, honestly. Just play safe, don't pull too big. If you pull too many mobs in this area, it can get overwhelming very, very quickly. There are a lot of really rough mobs here, um, but just, just play safe, and the bots in here, which are the main feature of Mechagon Junkyard, will do most of the work for you. Now, the route that I'm going to show you, the route will change every week, every day, depending on your comp, it, it will always change, because the the fact of the matter is, it uh, your, your pathing for bosses will depend on where the last boss is situated. If they're, the last boss is circling one of the bosses, you can't go there first necessarily because it will activate hard mode for it, which will just, you know, send some bots down onto the ground, make the area filled with electricity. It's just very annoying and there's no point doing it. So the, um, the order of bosses for the first three at least are going to be different every week, depending on where the last boss is circling. But um, in this specific scenario for us, I think it was circling Gunker. So, uh, I will show you, this is the first week of um, Shadowlands Season 4, by the way, where this VOD comes from. This is a 17 Junkyard, uh, we end up 3 chesting it, and I will show you how that is done. Now, um, it, I've, I've come to my attention, a lot of people can't really see the bots, so you just gotta be, just, just be aware, like the shock bots will have lightning coming out of it, and you can kind of see it. Uh, it's a little, it's a little different. It, it's pretty obvious when you're looking for it, but if you have never seen it before, it might be a little hard to uh, to, uh, to detect. But um, this route specifically, you can use every single week. I'm just going to show you the fast way uh, that I get five shock bots immediately, because that should be the first thing you do. the The fastest, the faster you get five shock bots for your team, the uh, faster you'll be able to just clear the dungeon. Um, so getting them quick is key. Uh, also, a reminder that if you do end up dying in the dungeon, you do lose all the bots that you have. There are three different kinds of bots. There are shock bots, there are grease bots, and there are um, welding bots. <coughs> one will give you haste, one will give you stamina, and one will give you damage over time. I'm pretty sure shock bots are a maximum of three targets. Tell me if I'm wrong in the comment section below, guys. Uh, but it will most likely top your damage, and shock bots are affected by haste. So if you want to pick haste, this is probably the dungeon to pick haste if you pick something else otherwise, because shock bots will carry you through this entire dungeon. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video and uh, review this VOD we got right here. So a 17 junkyard, like I said before, we're going to start off by going around to Gunker. So we're going to start here, jump straight off, watch for this pack right here. You don't want to be pulling this, this is going to make, make everything a lot longer and a lot more annoying if you do end up pulling that pat. So we're going to run straight here, as you can see, we're going to go up, and immediately, as we're here, I don't know if you can see, there's a shock bot right here in that corner there, and I'm going to grab this scrapper. If you can see, there's a little bit of a lightning head on it. And I'm going to grab this scrapper up here too, and there's another shock bot where our uh, Brett Paladin was going, he's going to jump over and down to the right. There's another shock bot there. I'm going to make sure I have aggro of these two, I'm going to bring these over to here, and we're going to pull all of this as a welding bot down here. It's a little bit shiny, as you can see. Just trickling around. Now, the most important uh, ability here is shrink on the uh, renormalizer here. It will make someone in your party small. And if you walk over them while they're small, it will do a substantial amount of damage. Enlarge is going to, obviously, enlarge a player. Or in this case, a, a mob. Now, gyro scrap, just don't want to be near it, and you want to be, obviously, dodging the swirls on the ground. Very standard stuff. You've got your carrion swarm from your infiltrator, as always, from the affix of the, of, the, uh, of the season. And then you've got the fear puddles on the ground, or the sleep puddles on the ground, sorry. So, with these scrap bots, these malfunctioning scrap bots, you want to be very careful. Only really try and pull two at a time, because... They do a lot of AoE, especially on um, on any week, really. Like, this is just a tyrannical, and it's still doing a lot a lot of damage. So, um, you want to try and, again, minimize the amount of things that are happening, purely for the fact that 
you don't need to rush Junkyard. You have so much time in this dungeon. The bots do everything for you. It's pretty... It's pretty chill on the timer. Um, if you're wondering why I have this over here on the left, this is a weak aura telling me, because I'm dictating what's going on in this dungeon, uh, telling me who doesn't have a certain bot. You've got the shock bot here, the welding bot, and then the grease bot here as well. So a bit of jump up here. Now, I don't intend to pull this pack, but it just ended up being there. Percentage-wise, you can literally just pull whatever you want. As you can see, a hunter does die and then loses their shock bot, so they have to find another shock bot. Which is a bit annoying because we just picked up two. There's another one here, as you can see, just under the word enemy forces. There's a shock bot right there. Looks like it has like a bit of a bit of a coil. Looks exactly the same as the coil bearer right here. Just a little bit smaller. That's all. Should be very easy to see. They're just walking around. Now, once the jar, once the scrap bot gets to a certain percentage, they're going to uh, cast an explosion on the ground underneath them and just kill themselves. So just make sure you're moving away from them. When that happens, as you can see, self-destruct move away from it. Now, the thing that killed our hunter was the cavalry. Now, this mob ends up killing a lot of people. You can outrange it, but you just need to make sure that you are dodging the uh, the, the bullets that are coming out of the cavalry. It's just going to go clockwise in a, in a slow, slow clockwise direction. It is very easy to dodge. Just be close to the target and move along with it. That's about it. It does a charge as well. You can see a swirl on the ground. The whole dungeon is pretty much just a bunch of swirls you need to dodge and a bunch of frontals you need to avoid. You want to go through a nano slicer, there's a basic bleed on the tank, nothing really important there. We've got a shock bot here, and we've also got another welding up there that got taken before. So I'm going to grab these two mobs here. Finish that off. Okay, now like I said, on our map, Gunker is the one that has the last boss circling it. So we are not going to go Gunker first. We're just going to grab those bots here because this side already has three bots very close to each other. That's why I always pull that side no matter what week it is. And then I go towards whatever boss I want to start off with. This week, this specific week, as you can see, there's another, uh, it's another um, Zap bot over there. We're going to pull this pack here because it runs into the Zap bot area. I'm just going to kill that pack. Like I said before, killing mobs in here, it just depending on if someone pulls it or if it's in your pathway, you don't really have to worry about doing specific mob packs. As long as you can clear all the mobs around the bosses and you clear the specific mobs that are required to summon Gunker as well. You can, yeah, you can really, really pick and choose whatever you want. Alright, so we've got another welding over there. So that's three weldings, three shocks, or four technically, but we did lose one. So then our fifth shock bot in probably two or three minutes, you can probably get all five shock bots, is right here in between the trees, as you can see. I'm just going to grab someone from there. But we need to find another shock bot, so I'll grab another one down the side here as well. So... There's two different bots here. There's a heavy scrap bot and a malfunctioning scrap bot. The malfunctioning ones are going to do this spin where they put the thing on the ground, like I said before. The heavy scrap bots are going to do two abilities. They're going to put a kind of a shrouded uh, ability on the ground. And they're also uh, called exhaust, sorry. And uh, that means they're untargetable outside of it. If you're in it with them, you can target it too. Now, it's very important to pull them out of it because they end up casting repair protocol, which needs to be interrupted Otherwise, they fully heal. So you don't want that to happen because it's just going to take a really long time for that to um, for that for to kill that again. Now, as long as you have all five zap bots, you're pretty much just steamrolling through these ads. Now we're going to pull these. You want to be very careful about Trixie and uh, Nano's room because there's a lot of pats around here, and these um, these specifically these are uh, there's a few mobs in here which don't have a threat table. And they're just going to jump around everywhere. Now you want to be very, very, very careful. Because if they jump towards another pack, they're just going to pull that pack. And there's been a lot of cases where there, there's just been heaps of chain pulling. Um, not intentionally, but it's just happened because the positioning of the mobs. Now there's another shock bot in that alcove right there behind these mobs. So you've got pretty much six or seven shock bots in this route already. And we're only three or four minutes in. So this is, this is extremely efficient to get shock bots straight away, even if you have a few deaths. You just want to be as safe as possible and not to get these bots, uh, not to lose these bots. 
Now you're going to get this pattern. This is where the mini boss of the um, of the infiltrating affix is. Now these are the piston head blasters. These are the ones that keep shooting random players. They're going to put grenades on the ground. You want to dodge those. The dogs that we picked up before do a frontal, which you just need to dodge, obviously. And then uh, the same the same issue with every uh, every single dungeon. This mini boss is going to do the same abilities. Where it's going to do the massive circle around it, you need to dodge. The blood siphon, where you need to break the shield and interrupt it. And then the bat, where you need to stun it. You have to stun the bat. Otherwise it's going to take control of someone and they are going to die. And this is one of those dungeons where dying is even more... Uh, even more taxing and bad for your team. Uh compared to other dungeons. With other dungeons, you don't really lose much except for five seconds on your timer and a bit of a run back. This, you lose potentially, oh God knows. You lose a lot of damage, a lot of health, and a lot of, uh, a lot of defensive, uh, sorry, a lot of haste if you had all three bots. And remember, there's only a limited amount of bots in the area. So if you end up dying too many times with all the bots, you will eventually get to a point where you have no bots left and the dungeon's gonna end up being one of the easiest dungeons to uh, feeling like one of the hardest ones. And you'll understand later on. Because these are these bots really do make a massive difference. So we're gonna pull all these. Again, the mechanics are gonna do two abilities. They're gonna do repair, which is obviously gonna heal, and they're gonna do overclock, which is going to increase uh, the haste of everything around it. You just need to make sure you're, um, you're interrupting those. The crawlers are going to do a frontal, which is called scrap cannon. You just need to dodge that. And they're going to do an AoE as well, which is just going to zap everything around it for a duration. It does quite a lot of damage, so you usually only want to pull them by themselves. Um, but since it's only a 17 and the group I'm with is quite capable, they will. I'll just pull extra and they should be okay. Now these blasters again are very, very annoying. Run and gun, you can stop it mid-air with a stun. It's probably the best idea to do that, because on the higher key, they will do a lot of damage when they're doing run and gun and shooting as well. You don't want them just shooting constantly. Just try and get some AoE stuns or single stuns over there. So now we're going to come up to our first boss in this specific route, which is Trixie and Nano. Now, you want to get them both down at the exact same time, otherwise one of them is going to buff, uh, get buffed. So, Nano is going to do rollout, which he's going to jump into his little mecha wheel here. And Trixie is just going to continuously cast Taze. Now, you want, you want a bit of a bit of an interrupt rotation there uh, to make sure Taze isn't going off all the time. As you can see, Nano does a, a, uh, a big line in front of him, and he just revs up his, his mecha wheel, and then he's just going to send it across the map. And I get hit by that, obviously, um, to show you. Yeah, just to show you what happens. You just get knocked back and take a lot of damage. Uh, as a tank, you know, knocks you back. Doesn't really matter. It's all right. You want to avoid it regardless. You want these guys to be as close as possible. As you can see, he kind of does like a bit of a wheelie. Revs up a little bit. So you give, you get about five or six seconds to kind of see where he's going. And then he's just going to send it through. Once again, Trix is just going to keep casting Taze. She's going to eventually put down an exhaust. Like what a, uh, one of the... Um, mobs we previously did and this exhaust is uh important because of the next ability that's going to happen which is mega taze she's going to cast it on one person and the only way to avoid it is either using an immunity or making sure you walk into that exhaust now roadkill is going to jump over to a, a a uh, position and bolt buster is a frontal facing the tank so you want to make sure you're not in front of Nano when he's off his bike so Nano is literally don't be in front of him ever Trixie is literally interrupt every ability and go into the uh, exhaust when you have Mega Taze on you that's pretty much the fight that's about all you need to know very very simple now there is a way to do this boss even easier there is a portion of the back of the room here where you can kind of LOS both of them into a corner and you can just kind of keep them permanently stacked and it, it's a lot easier to do. Um, it's just if you aren't quick enough with, you know, moving out of certain mechanics, you can just wipe the entire group. So it's 
So to be a bit careful of that, you can do either or. I just like doing it normally. It's 17, I don't need to do anything fancy here. So uh, to the right of me there, there's also a, uh, a uh, zap bot. Up here, this is the alcove with uh, two grease spots at the end there. Now this one's a little bit hard to see, but you can see them right in the back there. The grease spots are, because uh, they blend in with the ground a little bit. You can see them though, they, they just have a bit, a bit of oil spurting out of them as they're walking along. So if you really, really know where they are, um, it's not that hard to find. But again, like I said, after you do a few runs of this, you'll kind of remember where things are. And you can also allocate your friends or your group to pick up certain, uh, certain things. And like I'm doing right now, I'm placing markers on the, on the map just to make sure that people know where they are because it's relatively rough for them to find it. I've done this plenty of times back when it was a, a current uh, dungeon in uh, BFA. So I do remember this dungeon quite well. Now. From what we were doing just then, you've got a bunch of mobs here that are a little a little strange. Grunters don't have an aggro table, they're just going to run around. They do no damage at all, you don't even have to worry about them. Let your zap bots do, do their thing and just AoE to your heart's content. You've got trash tossers, grinders, and shamans, and bullies as well. So you've got a bunch of different mobs here. Shamans will do a hex that'll root every single person around them. So you want to make sure that is interrupted because afterwards what follows is the rest of these mobs doing abilities that you need to dodge. So the infiltrator, sorry, the, infiltr the bully turned into an infiltrator. The uh, grinders are gonna do enrages. The uh, trash tossers are gonna throw trash. And they're just gonna put them on the ground. So you just wanna avoid the circle as per usual. Now we'll go to the bullies afterwards. The bu there will be two bullies in front of the next boss and you'll be able to see what's going on. In this cave to the left of me as well is another shock bot. There's plenty of shock bots here, guys. So you don't have to worry if you do die with one or two of them. We're only nine minutes into the key. We've already passed maybe 10 or 11 shock bots. So there are quite a few. It's just, again, at the start of the dungeon, you want to be getting them as soon as possible. And I highly recommend the route that I have uh, because it is, in my opinion, the most efficient and the quickest way to get five shock bots immediately. So again, the same mobs. They're, they're, these are all relatively simple to understand. I like to said a lot of them are just small, small mobs with no aggro table. You got double trash toster here with a grinder. I'm gonna grab the bully as well. Now the grinder actually ends up going on our paladin. I don't have aggro on that, so I think the shock bot kind of went a bit too too hard on uh on on our paladin and then just took aggro of that grinder while i was grabbing everything else so that was unfortunate and that can happen sometimes if their shock bot goes a bit a bit crazy before yours does as a tank um again trash tosses throwing trash not doing anything much else we got double enraged casts on the bullies as well and now the bullies are going to do an ability where you really have to watch out for which is called shockwave now you need to just watch where they're facing they're going to do a massive frontal in a line if you get hit by it, you're probably dead, uh, as a DPS or a healer especially. As a tank, again, you can live most things, uh, but just be very careful of it. Now, we're going to come up to our next boss. I'm going to tell our paladin to go pick up the shock bots, because we have two of them that are still around here that no one's picked up because we don't need it, but now he does. So he's going to go grab that shock bot. He's going to come along to us, grab this welding up here as well. Looks like a little bit of a, a, lit, a lit bomb. Pretty easy to see now that uh, you've seen it a few times. So now I'm going to do King Gobamak. Now Gobamak is a very straightforward boss. Dodge the swirls on the ground. If you have a massive lightning swirl on the tank, stack on the tank, which will be charged smash. These small grunters are going to start coming in and piling in. This is pad city for DPS. Now the charge smash, you want to sit in it with everyone else. And now you're going to get this debuff. As you can see, we got three people with it. We had our Brett Paladin have it as well. He's run straight away to these nodes. When you go into here, you've got four coils around the room. There's one up here, one so one north, south, east, and west. Now you want one person with a debuff to walk next to it. It's going to charge the coil, and it's going to one-shot these grunters as soon as they come in. Because right now, the boss is going to summon hundreds of these guys. Now, if you really want to pad DPS, you can just let them go in and not charge the coils. I know a lot of groups that do that just for the fun of it. But uh, this is how you're supposed to do the boss. 
Uh, but that's pretty much it. Like, you're just dodging the swirls, soaking the charge with the tank, and then moving to the coils. As you can see, this boss is just absolutely getting destroyed. And it's a tyrannical week as well. Yes, it's only a 17, but you can see how hard these zap bots are going. And I'll probably have a look at my damage, uh, damage meters afterwards. Now, I'm th 390 to 292 at the moment, so I'm quite geared at the, for the first week of, uh, of the new season. So, you can probably see I'm doing quite a bit of damage as well. So, that's why, that's why these, uh, these dungeons are going quite, uh, quite easily. Okay, so Gobamax dead. That probably took about a minute, maybe even less. So now we're going to run. We've done Trixie, we've done Gobamax, we're going to Gunker now. So we're going to go all the way back around. Now we're just going to make sure we're dodging everything. As you can see with the weak aura on the left hand side as well, right here, we have two grease spots missing. We have our DH and our Paladin that do not have grease spots yet. Now I'm going to try my best to run around and find some grease spots for them, because they should have all of them, but unfortunately one of them did die recently, so they lost all their bots. I'm going to let you guys know where the other shock bots are. So right here in front of me in this little pipeline, there's a shock bot. Make sure you grab it. Now this area as well is extremely frustrating if you pull too many. Now the eating slime will cast and also multiply and also splash. Now all of the slimes that it does will do the exact same thing. They'll all splash. If you get too many of these slimes, it will kill the group. It is quite deadly on a fortified week, so you want to be very, very careful. Now the monstrosity is going to do a consume, which is this big, big, big swirl. You just have to move out of it. Otherwise, you get a massive healing debuff that if not dispelled, and you need like a priest or a paladin or a monk to dispel it, um, you will die. So you need to make sure you're out of it. I walk in there, I'm pretty sure I just walk out of it. And I'm just waiting for the Paladin to dispel me, which he does. Now, we're getting these Slime Elementals as well. They'll do a Slime Bolt. Right now, we can't interrupt it because we have an Inspired Mob. And they'll also do a Charge. Now, I highly recommend with the Charges to avoid people to just walk into them. Stun them when they're casting the Charge. It does, it does save a lot of people because a lot of people don't pay attention when it's happening. And it does a lot of damage when it's on Fortified and you will get one shot as a DPS or a healer. So just be a bit careful there. Now slime wave is going to go, as you can see, goes straight in. So it almost kills our DH right there. So it did about 70% of his health just from doing that. Now the lurkers, all they're going to do is a suffocating, uh, suffocating smog ability. Just make sure you interrupt it. Otherwise, it it just constricts the player. That's about it. That's all the lurkers really do. Nothing too crazy. There's a welding over here as well, as you can see. I'm clicking on it. Now, all you need to do to summon uh, Gunker is to kill three of these toxic monstrosities. There's one near the, where the boss spawns, there's one over here, there's also a shock bot and a grease bot in this little contraption over here, this little building here. So you, you pretty much want to try and, what I'm doing is trying to pull one of each mob, uh, if I can, because then we don't have to deal with multiple of the exact same uh, ability, if you, if you understand what I'm saying here. It's just much easier because everyone knows what these things are doing and there's not too many like interrupts we need to do or you know like um, things we need to dodge if you grab like too many elementals or too many lurkers. As long as we have things assigned and people can understand what they need to do. You just want to pull maybe two, three, maximum four mobs at a time. Any more than that you're starting to overwhelm uh, your group. And then the last monstrosity is over here in the far back. There's a grease spot back here from where I pulled those mobs before, where that, where you see that little uh, pull, that smog over here is of poison. There's a, there's a grease spot over there. You want to keep pulling these. As you can see, the enemy force is about 91% right now. Anywhere between 90 to 95% before heading over to the last boss's area, you're pretty good. Otherwise, again, you don't need to worry about your percentage here. Just pull what you need to pull. If you over pull a little bit, it's whatever. This this dungeon is so easy and quick. Like we're only 15 minutes in and we're almost done. Like this this dungeon is so ridiculously simple. Uh, but you just again need to make sure that you're getting your bots as soon as possible and not dying and not over pulling. 
So tanks don't don't try and pull too many things because you want to, you know, have your DPS pad as much as possible. Like, trust me, just slow and steady wins the race here, and it cannot be more evident. Now, this boss, very, very simple. Dodge the swirls. If the swirls land on uh, some of these um, mobs, or the boss will just uh, goop some of these mobs. Now, these are your helpful mobs. You want to be, like you see uh, seeing us right now, you want to be standing in them as much as possible. Unless they get gooped, you want to move out of it and dodge the swirls. If you get hit by a swell, you will get gooped yourself. Now, if you get gooped, your team just has to get you out. Um, hopefully, we can see where the goops come in. As you can see, one of the bots got gooped over there. They're going to make sure that goes out. Now, the, the water the water around this, these bots, they're just cleansing bots. They're pretty much any time they go over something uh, on the ground, any of these uh, green patches, it'll just remove it. So you just want to make sure you're always standing in them. Now this week in particular is quaking, so it is a little bit annoying to have to stack in and then like spread out all the time, but every other week you'll be sweet. It'll be a little easier. And you're just literally just going in a, in a circle. Melee will stand in this one, range will stand in the one at the back. And uh, yeah, it's uh, quite a simple boss. Like, as you can see, all the bosses are quite straightforward. There's only maybe two or three mechanics you need to worry about. Nothing too crazy or outrageous or you know, one-shot potential or anything like that. Just dodge swirls, dodge frontals. Name of the game. So now we're going to walk up here. We're going to try and skip this, but I'm just like, ah, we probably need the percent, so let's grab these three. Now we've got these three mobs here. You've got a trooper, a normalizer, and the chicken trooper. Oh, the cavalry, sorry, that you saw before. Troopers are just going to do the nano slice on the, on the tank. You're going to have the enlarge and the shrink, shrink from the renormalizer, and then you've got that standard frontal rapid fire from the cavalry, and the charge with the swirl on the ground that you need to dodge. Very, very standard. And then you've got this five pack. All that's different here is there is a coil bearer, which you just need to interrupt the ability that it does. Very standard, very simple. Again, interrupt and charge coil. You can stun that too. And now the last boss is usually one phaseable uh, if you do it a certain way, especially when you're at a high key level. And I'll explain how to do it. Hopefully I'll do this last boss properly because I remember the first week I was not running up the sides properly, which was quite embarrassing. But right, you're going to start off the fight with... So, a small tip there as well. If you're if you're the tank and you're further from everyone else and they're all the way at the back, if you engage the boss, they will just teleport in this ring here. So, you don't really have to wait for them. Just, just pull the boss, they'll all teleport in. Um, so, the tank buster is going to come in. It's going to do a tank buster mechanic, which is called wreck. Standard thing. You just need to make sure you have a defensive for it. Doesn't really do that much damage, though. Um, and then it's going to cast these, uh, these swirls on the ground. Again, dodge it. Now, afterwards, it's going to do Reinforcement Relay, which is going to summon these three shocks. These three shock bots that are going to continuously walk towards you guys, and also put lightning on the ground wherever they walk. Now, from what you can see here, we have an Earth Grab Totem that goes down. If you have a Druid, they can Mass Root, or, you know, Earth Souls, or just knock them back and keep them together. So there's lightning on the ground here, but after a while, they will explode. So you just want to make sure that they are, just want to make sure that they are uh, slowed and away from everyone else. So over here, okay, good, I do do it. So you don't have to go around this way slowly like these guys are. You can literally just jump over these beams. The whole point of this area is to not get hit by the lightning or the alarmo bots that are coming down the ramp here. So you just jump over them, wait for the lightning to go, go sideways and just zigzag through, and then click this coil over here. Now, you need to have um, the energy bar showing on your UI. I personally don't, so I have no idea when this is about to go off, so I'm asking my group when this is going off. Now, the best way to do this is you have everyone charge this, and then when it's about to, to, uh, to finish, you have your healer or your tank stay back while everyone else walks into these alarmo bots oh sorry walks into the lightning and then gets zapped back to the beginning of the of the uh, the little gauntlet here 
So then they can straight away lust and go onto the boss immediately with all their cooldowns without having to run all the way down during that burn phase. So we're going to have a few people jumping back. As you can see, they're all running back. I'm staying here. I'm going to continuously do this until it's done. They're already down there. They're going to pop lust and they're going to send all their cooldowns in and nuke down the boss. Now the boss is going to have a crazy increased damage taken right now. I'm pretty sure it's just 100%. And we're just going to pop all our cooldowns. And as soon as this haywire is done, you still have a few seconds while it's like trying to recharge and go back in the air. But you pretty much just want to beat this phase. Otherwise, you have to repeat all of this over again and it'll go to the opposite side. The side it chooses when you do defeat the first boss's intermission phase, or the first boss's phase, sorry, is completely random. So you just make sure you're looking where the coil is uh, is going to be charged. As soon as you see a charged coil on the left or right, you know that's the way you need to go. So as long as we kill everything, we've got 100%. 20 minutes, 44 seconds, easy three chests on a 17. No loot for me, unfortunately. Do I have a look at what kind of damage I'm doing? Or if, uh, if my zap bot is just crazy high on my damage? Let's have a look. I don't think so. Maybe a little bit later. But, that is, uh, that is pretty much the key, guys. Um, that's really, it's a really straightforward dungeon. Um, no wonder, you know, people are doing 31s on it already uh, at the time of this recording. But um, yeah, this, this dungeon is by far one of the easiest ones. Like I said before, and I'll reiterate again, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but just take it slow. Don't overpull. Make sure you ever, all of you have the bots. They are very important. It is literally free damage, free healing, oh sorry, free health and free haste. If you're not taking them for some reason, do them now. There is literally no reason not to take the bots. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions or you want to um, you want to have a look at how we do these things live, please make sure you check my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash triple Bs, which will be linked in, in the description. Uh, follow my socials, guys. Like the video. Comment on what you want to see next. I think we have two more videos left. We have Workshop, Mechagon Workshop, and Iron Docks. Um, I have been asked and, uh, and uh, told that I should make advanced guides for uh, the people that are trying to do 20 to 25s right now. Uh, these, are, these are very basic routes uh, with all the guides that I've done so far for Season 4. So if you'd like to see some more advanced guides for a bit more crazy things that you can do uh, with the usage of invisibility potions and shrouds and you know pulling things with the boss and um, little, little tips and tricks over there in the more higher tier levels, please let me know in the comments and uh, I will get to, the, to them. Um, those videos will probably be a little bit quicker because the, they're intended for people that already know what's going on. These are very beginner friendly and I'm trying to explain everything very, very detailed. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching guys. I appreciate it. Peace out and I'll see you on the next video.